Okay, my friends, this is a very, very interesting discussion we should have today. It's about what is the best way to have a baby born. We know there's cesarean where they cut open the stomach and the baby comes out that way. And of course, there's a natural vaginal delivery. Now, what is it? What is the difference to the baby? The baby comes into the world one way or the other. Now, is one better than the other? Is there anything that you can do to enhance one or the other? Let's read the article and go from there because it's very illustrative. I, I understand pretty well what's going on here, I think. So you ready? Let's go. Okay, babies born from a C-section miss out on a swipe of bacteria from their mother's vagina. There's all kinds of bacteria in your body on outside inside all over the place and the vaginal canal has a lot of bacteria so they're, they're not getting that it impacts the newborn's microbiome and may or may not impact their future health and development as well i've been researching this very very well and over your lifetime the only thing that really is your immune system is the bacteria that creates the enzymes which break down food, kill invaders, and remove wastes. So let's continue. Okay, so don't forget, they're not getting the bacteria when they're born. So here's what they're talking about. Scientists try to figure out a small new study lead, led by researchers from Southern Medical University in China suggests the practice of vaginal seeding. A cotton gauze is doused in a mother's vaginal fluid smeared on a newborn baby. Could be an effective way to rebalance gut bacteria following a C-section. Because the baby has no, no um, bacteria in his body at all. It's in a sterile environment. They're born and then they get the bacteria in their body that is in the local area basically and, and then that basically seeds the baby's digestive system with primarily in the gut. Now, vaginal seeding could even have a, pos a positive impact on a child's short-term brain development, at least for the first six months of life. Researchers argue that. Although far more research is needed before the practice can be properly recommended. They do not recommend it now. Not only that, they if you're having a C-section, they give you a ton of antibiotics. It goes right into the baby's body. They used to clamp off the um, umbilical cord before they gave you the antibiotics. And they say, no, nah, we don't do that anymore. Since 2011, they stopped doing that. And when they give you the antibiotics, the baby gets the antibiotics. So immediately, as far as I'm concerned, the baby's immune system that really isn't operable at that point is already going to reject what it's what it should be trying to accept that's my conclusion from the results from the research now they say far more research is needed now in the current experiments the lips the skin hands of 32 newborns delivered by the c-section were treated with a carefully screened vaginal swab that had been taken from the mother two hours prior to the birth the babies were swabbed for about 15 seconds just that 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 then they didn't give them any bath for 12 hours. Now, six weeks later, the poop from these babies contained more of their mother's bacteria and more mature bacteria than 36 other babies born by a C-section that were only swabbed with the saline solution, which is what they recommend. They don't recommend using this vaginal juice. I've been saying that it might be a good idea, and better than that, actually, is the feces, because that's where you're getting really your good quality bacteria, basically. Now, six months after the birth, compared with those smeared with saline swabs, children who received the vaginal swab scored higher on a brain development survey filled out by their parents. Now, so the parents said, here's what the kid is capable of doing here at six months. Now, the scores were on par with the development of babies born vaginally, researchers say. So they say, well, the vaginal swab and the norm born vaginally, they're about the same. All parents were blind to what treatment their baby had received. So you had a vaginally swabbed one and you had a saline, 
you didn't know the difference. But the one who the vaginally swabbed were the same as the vaginal delivery. So we don't know exactly how the early gut bacteria affect their neurodevelopment, admits Yang He, who studies the microbiome at Southern Medical University. But there is some indirect evidence that this shows some microbial metabol metabolites are related to conditions. Metabolites break down things, metabolize. For instance, some bacteria like lactobacillus were more dominant in the feces of babies given a vaginal swab. This is interesting as lactobacillus has been shown to improve a neurological condition in animal models. So they, they tested them in animals and it, it helps. So now it says, whoops, where am I, where am I? All right, here it is. Still, it is not clear if the lactobacillus levels detected in current studies have long-term effects on babies' brains. While C-section babies do show a different range of bacteria in their guts compared to those born vaginally, some studies suggest the babies that differences disappear after about nine months. Well, that's because they're starting to take in some of the natural bacteria. But better, I would think, to have it early. That would be my opinion. The current study only tested the microbiomes of babies for 42 days. So in 42 days, the ones that got it Originally, they're good. The ones that didn't get it, they didn't don't, they don't have it. It's true that at a population level, studies have linked C-section to an increased likelihood of childhood obesity, asthma, and diabetes later in life from C-sections. But whether that association is directly driven by gut bacteria in babies or can be alleviated with vaginal seeding remains unclear. They don't know. To date, there simply isn't enough evidence to recommend vaginal seeding after a C-section, so they're not recommending it. Its proposed benefits are based on uncertain science. Well, anyway, there are potentially severe and fatal consequences if baby are accidentally exposed to harmful pathogens. When you're being born, you're coming through that birth canal, so it is what it is. The British Medical Journal and United States American College of Obstetricians got it. both caution against the practice. Don't do it, they're saying. This is British and American. That doesn't mean there isn't a point to studying the effects in a highly controlled clinical study, but there's reason to remain skeptical. You always want to be skeptical of everything. But if you understand the way the body processes things, Nothing is processed in your body without bacteria. Bacteria create enzymes and... Okay, my friends, it turns out the vaginal swab may contribute, but it's basically intestinal bacteria that they're missing. They found out it didn't completely change the microbiota imbalance with the vaginal swab, but the poop transplant did. For these babies, they should be able to, to test their feces of the babies and say, this kid's got problems because he doesn't have any lactobacillus, he doesn't have any of this, he doesn't have any of that. And then do whatever they can for the two poop transplants. This has got to be started as a study. And you've got to have to bring this up to your doctors. And somebody, and doctors themselves, have to start talking among themselves. It's not an approved or well-studied treatment. And it's not going to be a big money maker probably. But it's going to make people a lot healthier. It's the money part, I think, that's just the problem here. To get funding for something that's not going to be a big money maker, that usually doesn't go over well.